Hi, welcome to Kiss Go More Thing, a weekly podcast about knitting and crafting. I'm Janessa, I'm the knitter. And I'm Brooklyn, and I'm the crafter. Uh, we had a busy week. Brooklyn started dance again this week, so it meant that we had a lot of uh, traveling around and rearranging schedules and kind of getting used to new uh, new activities this week. But I think we made it through okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about Brooklyn starting knitting again is that I get a lot of extra crafting time while I'm sitting around waiting on her dance class. So I have a lot of knitting to share. Brooklyn has some drawings and some other crafting things to share. So let's start with finished objects. Do you want to talk about your pom poms? Yeah. So. The, well, I have, I made these pom-poms, um, I have more of them around the house, I just couldn't find. Those were just the couple that you did this week? Yeah. How did you do them? How did you get the extra, the two colors in there? Well, for this one, when you can do multi-colors by taking one strand on the pom-pom maker, wrap up one color, and then you take another color of yarn. Wrap it on the other side, so you cut and then tie, and it makes this multicolored. So it makes it like evenly multicolored. Do you have one of your little pom pom makers handy? Yes. Are they close by? But one's pink and one's yellow. But that is a small one. So when you're doing it, oh, I don't want to do that because it's yeah. not it's the not little. Tight. Do you have a piece of string to tie it with? Um. Yeah. So while I tie this, what do you um, what do you do with your pom poms when you're done with them? Well, I either like to look at them, or I. Do you ever put them on things, or are they just decoration? We could put them on things, I guess. Yeah. We could make like a pom pom necklace. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. Uh, I haven't thought about anything to do with the, these. Um, Last year, Mommy sewed them onto a sweater. Yeah. For Ugly Sweater for Day. Ugly Sweater Day. <laughs> <laughs> it was the cutest ugly sweater ever. Oh, I wouldn't consider it ugly. I, no, I wouldn't have considered it ugly either. So you can just break that. Okay, so... These are the pom-pom makers from Clover. There you go. Let's lock that up. Um, and the scissors are next to you. You can trim it if you want. So it's, they come in like two pieces. And then, you put them together. And then you wrap the yarn around these the halves. So that's what she was saying when she did the multicolored one. She wrapped one color around this half, and then she wrapped another color around Wait, there's this some half. Are in here? I think. Yeah, all my all the rest of them are in here. And then that's how she got the multicolored one. These are actually really fun. This is a small, like the smallest one, but they come. You can get a set of small, a set of large, and then I think they have a jumbo yeah. that you can get as well. This one isn't really, this one isn't really pom pom shaped, but this is a multi, this is a four. That was a lot of fun color one, wasn't it? Yeah. You can still, you can kind of see the string. That would be fun to do like on a really big one to put on top of a hat. Yeah. Cool. Kind of fluff. See? Yeah. Green and pink. I like and that purple blue. one. And then this purple one is so fluffy. So, how do you make them extra fluffy? Do you just wrap more, is the more yarn the fluffier? Is that how it works? Yeah, I think. But this one's really soft and fluffy. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to talk about one of my finished objects. Which, I show. Oh, sorry. I'm rushing you. I apologize. It's fine. And then I have this one that's green and tan. And 
And then I have this one. That's all the cam? Yeah, that's all the cam. And all this yarn that she's been using um, were just like scraps and samples and then green. from my knitting bin. Okay, oh, now, can, now can I talk about my finished yep. object? <laughs> you, as you can see, that's on her neck. Yes, it is on my neck. So, last week you got a pretty good picture of the What the Fade that I was knitting on. Um, very shortly after that, it came off the needles last week. You're going to have to help me hold this up real quick. So, it's huge. Very, yeah. very, very, very big. I'm going to get it off here. Um, <laughs> and I'll insert some pictures here of me wearing it um, mm -hmm. that you might have seen on Instagram. What? Can I wear a shawl? What shawl do you want to wear? That pink. You want to wear my purple one? Yeah. Go for it. You can put on one of my old ones that I've already shown on the podcast. What? That was, uh, I've showed that one on the podcast before. It was a... Um, Oh, I can't. It was the Indigo Sea shawl, but I made it out of purple, so I called it the Plum Purple shawl or something like that. Anyway, back to what the fade. So, lots and lots of brioche. I did the full garter fade. I know some people stopped early because it was getting to be so large that they decided to stop their fades a little early. And I went for clue six, and I did the tassels. So, the tassel... Um, and because I've used hand spun yarn, it's all kinds of, it doesn't lay flat. Um, it's a little, but that's okay. I kind of like that look on the tassel, but it's basically, you did a faded tassel. So it went from like one side was your light colors all the way through to your darkest color. And I did one for each side. And I saw some people who did. Um, like pom-poms instead of tassels on each corner and that looked really cute too but there's my fun tassels for a hot second I actually debated doing fringe like doing um, taking like three strands of each color and doing a fringe and just repeating that all along the edge so I'd have like a really faded fringe along the bottom but um, I decided maybe that would be a little too busy and it would take away from um, <coughs> so you can see on the on the bottom um, there's just a very very small bit that's that color number one that was my favorite color um, and I thought if I put fringe there like that it's just gonna take away from that that lovely lovely um, headwig colorway that was my color number one down there on the bottom so I went for the tassels like the pattern called for um, my one regret with this and I don't know if it's gonna show up while I'm holding it it doesn't it happens when hold right here that part out I'm gonna hold this part out so um, when I hold the edge of the garter stitch you can see this right here um, the brioche where the brioche meets the garter is really baggy and loose like if you hold it straight across the top um, it makes it a little more wearable but I feel like my gauge between these two sections was so vastly different that had I maybe gone up a needle size in the garter stitch it would have been a little bit more true triangular like when I blocked it out, the brioche really wanted to go like diamond shaped when you hold it up. I don't know. So it's very wearable and it's very cozy. And for as much shawl as there is here, I mean, it's wider than my wingspan. Um, I'm 5'7 and it went quite a bit longer than my arms. Um, it took up most of the queen size bed while I was blocking it. So it's very, very large. Um, and that makes it easy to wrap around. You get a lot of fabric here. 
but um, because it is such a nice light and airy, that brioche section right up there at the top, um, I feel like it makes it a little more wearable. I don't know. Anyway, I like it. Uh, I can't get it looking like I want it to now. Maybe the shoulder's a little bit more there. So it's almost like wearing a big cow neck. Almost there at the top. But I'm I'm happy with that. So um, what the fade is finished. Yay. It's I like to say sometimes that like, oh, it's one I would definitely knit again, but I will not knit this again. Why? It's huge, and it takes so much yarn, and I just can't imagine myself needing more than one. Like this one, I can yeah. see myself knitting that one again. It's really big. It takes a lot of yarn, but it gets a lot more use. Whereas, like, I just, I don't think I would need another one like this. Another I'll do, made. I'll do other shawls that have brioche and things. I'll do other large shawls, but I just don't think I'll do this particular one again. Oh. I love it. I just don't yeah. think... I love it enough to need to. Yeah. So, um, do you want to talk about what you've been drawing on today? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Not all of these. I mean, I didn't. I know you didn't do all of them today, but you can talk about your drawing for a little bit. Um, I like a, well, I like to draw pictures of robins. You can kind of see there. <laughs> and then here's another one of it sitting on the branch. So the robins were pictures I found. Out of like magazines and stuff? No, Masterpiece. Oh, on Math you did these on Masterpiece? Yeah. I didn't do I didn't do this freehand. So why do you like to draw birds? Or why do you like robins? Well, I just like to draw birds because of their beautiful colors and and um, how they fly and they're one of my favorite animals. Yeah. We get lots of robins around here, that's for sure. Yeah. So do you think you'll ever color some of these in or are you just going to leave them as pencil drawings? I'm going to color them in sometime. Yeah. What other ones do you have? And then I there is a book called Mountain Dog. And, um, this is Gabe. He's the rescue dog. He's the mountain dog from the yeah. book? Yeah. And that was one that you read for school, or it was, uh, like, your spare time reading for school? I think it was... It wasn't one that you were assigned in class. It was one that you picked to read yeah. for your... Yeah, but I did that for my summer reading. Oh, your summer reading. It was Gabe the mountain dog? Yeah. Cool. So you take inspiration for your drawings from things that you read and yeah. animals that are around. And then, um, here is a picture of a morning dove. Which we have also a lot of those around here this time of year. And then on the back is a gray dove. The one with the black, the ones with the black color. You can kind of see that. There's kind of a black color. I just didn't fill it in. And I like the reason why I like doves is because they kind of have a black collar around their neck, and they kind of look like pigeons. <laughs> Most people don't like pigeons. You know that, right? What? <laughs> Most people think pigeons are kind of a pest. <laughs> why? Well, because they take over and they poop on everything. <laughs> And most people aren't very fond of pigeons, which I suppose the only time that you've really met a pigeon is on a movie. No. I can't wait my life. We don't have pigeons around here, honey. When we went to see KK, when she, we were going uh, to the coffee shop, we were never, and pigeons were walking all over the place. See, that's why most people think they're pests. Why? <laughs> because they're always around getting into things and... Pooping on everything. Yeah. Okay, so and doves then, are like pigeons, and that makes them cool. And then here's another robin. <laughs> I'm going to get to the end of this row. Okay. It's a piece of hair. It's really bugging me. 
Okay, I'm gonna get to the end of the row. You're gonna do some drawing. And I'm gonna talk about the rest of my knitting, which is a lot. Cause like I said, I had a lot of um, time to get out all the other works in progress and put uh, a little bit of work in each of them. I even have a new cast on that nobody has seen before. So let me get to the end of this row super quick and then we can talk about it. What are you gonna draw while I talk about knitting? Something Paw Patrol. Okay, so once I got done with my What the Fade, I had quite a bit of yarn left over. In fact, I'll show you. Um, this was everything from that four ounces of Hedwig, which was the four ounces of Hawkwind, which I can get an entire shawl out of what's left there. It's a lot left. Very, very little got used in the What the Fade. I have quite a bit left of that full circle fiber from Knit Picks. That was the dark chocolate. Um, I have probably a good like two and a half ounces left of the Shetland. So I have a good amount there, which I'm kind of thinking I might do something like a two colored shawl with those two. I like how they worked together. Or I might even like hold them double and do like a marled something or another. I don't know. And then I have um, a good bit left of the Reiner Dean as well. So um, this might make like a nice pair of um, mittens, I'm thinking. There's probably enough there that I can get a pair of like fingerless mitts out of them. Um, I don't know how I would do that because it, you can kind of see like the color shifts enough that they would not be matching at all. But it's soft enough. Maybe a hat. Maybe I'll do a hat out of it. I don't know. It's pretty soft. And there's quite a bit there. I just am not entirely sure what I'll do with that. So I do have a lot left over yarn wise. Now the two that I didn't show you were the, um, what was left over of the green from Spincerely Yours, the Superwash Merino, which was my color B, and then the marled, like the tan and cream marled yarn. Um, those were the two that I didn't have a ton left over. Um, actually, I do have left over. I shouldn't say. I have another two ounces of the Spincerely Yours fiber, and I have um, like four or five more skeins of that marled color that I, um, that I had spun up, and I just didn't use those skeins. But what was left of those two colors, I put into my granny stripe blanket. So you can see there's the green, that stripe there. There's, it doubled on that side, so we'll show you that side. And then on top I have what was left of the marled spun fiber, which I'm kicking myself that I can't remember what it was because I really like it. Um, I can't remember how I got it to spin marled like that. I'm guessing it was plied in that way, but I can't remember what the fibers were that I spun to get those two colors. <laughs> there was quite a bit more of that left, but yay. So that went into my granny stripe blanket, which at the rate I'm going on it, maybe you'll get it like when you graduate college or something as a present. <laughs> I might gift this to you one day. But how are you going to continue it? Well, you just keep, it's crochet, honey, so you just keep oh. adding stripes. It's just, it's a granny crochet. So as it, as I finish one project, like I put that leftover yarn into it, but I don't work on it enough to have made any real progress. It's definitely not going to be a blanket for this year, that's for sure. Um, okay, I'll talk about this one I was working on in my lap. This is the outing shawl, and I can't remember. I'm going to put the name of the designer up here because I cannot remember her name at all. Um, I think last time you saw it, I was right here, right past that stripe. 
and I've made it past another stripe. Um, and the main color of this is Swish from Knit Picks in their tonal colorway. It's the Worsted Swish. Um, and I'm not entirely sure where I got this light gray color from. It's what comes from knitting out of stash <laughs> when um, the stash run you've used has been used in multiple projects in Rift Out because it didn't work for those projects. I've lost the ball band, so I have no clue where that yarn came from. But I am getting a little bit of work done on that. This is kind of my mindless project at the moment because it really doesn't take a lot. Um, I'm doing increases, and then the only time I really have to pay attention is every... I can't remember how many rows in between I add in the the light color and when you're doing this row you achieve that it looks like color work but as you can see there like that's just a slip stitch that brings that little spike up so it's two row it's you know a row and back and then on your way back you you're slipping this stitch on the way across and then on the way back you're slipping this stitch so it's color work, but it's like safe color work because you're only ever working with one color at a time. I've come to, I think it's like mosaic knitting is what they call that. Um, and that's the kind of color work I can get behind. <laughs> I can do that kind of color work and it's pretty easy. I enjoy it. Um, I also put a big knitting bag up here. I can dig it out. Okay. So much stuff, I don't have a place for it all. I also worked on my Under the Willow shawl that I'm doing for the prayer shawl ministry that I knit with. And it's just a pretty basic um, trapezoid shape. And then it's got that lace panel that runs through the middle. And I've done, the last time you saw it, I had done like one repeat. And I've done another repeat of the lace. And I think I have to do two more uh, lace repeats before I start working on like the border of it. So that one is working up fairly quickly because it's on quite big yarn. Um, it's the impeccable line from Loops and Threads that you get at Michael's in the Orchid colorway is what I'm knitting that out of. Then I worked on so then during one of her classes this week at dance, I worked on mom's buffalo sweater. And I'm in the middle of the row, of course. Of course, it would be that way. Um, but yeah. I actually could probably finish that row off real quick and show it to you a little bit better, but um, it's making progress. This long side's getting quite long. I do need to get to, I think it's like 40 some inches on this short side. Um, I just like maybe two rows down broke into my second ball of yarn. So I'm starting to get to that point where I can kind of kid myself that like, yeah, once I block this out, because I do need to block it out some, so that, like, I can get to 44 inches <laughs> with another block of yarn, you know, thing of yarn, and then I have a third ball to do the back with. I'm like, it, it'll happen? I don't know. Mom asked me the other day how this project was going. I said, it's, it's coming along. <laughs> I think I'm going to have enough yarn. I said, plan B, I'm going to buy... Um, the company that made this, the buffalo fiber, they don't dye their buffalo fiber. 
Um, so when it's natural, like it just, it, it blends into this color. Like I'm not going to have to worry about color matching because it's always going to be this color. So instead of buying more fiber from them and spinning, I might just buy yarn to finish off the, I don't know. We'll see. I might end up buying fiber. I can't, hopefully I'll have enough yarn. That's, I'm crossing my fingers that I will have enough yarn. And we're just going to keep telling myself that until... <laughs> I run out and it becomes a disaster. Um, but yeah, that's getting worked on. Hopefully I can also get that worked on and done by Christmas time. I would love to be able to give that as, as a gift, but who knows. So, uh, last work in progress is actually a new cast on. So, oh, itchy nose. Nose. I've got a tangled mess. Okay, so um, I have a couple of people that are friends that are having babies in the next couple of months um, through October and November, so I thought it was time I started working on some baby blankets. And we're also always in need of baby blankets for the prayer shawl ministry, so I kind of have baby blanket on the brain. Um, and I thought, wouldn't it be cute if I did, um, I've seen a lot of like the cozy memory blankets where people are using the scrap yarn from, um, from like sock yarn to do blankets. And I liked that mitered square look, so I thought, well, I'm going to take these two different colors that I have, which is, I think, kiddo, do you see this ball band under the couch? Yeah. Let me go get it for me. So, um, I have this color from Big Twist. It's called Big Twist Yarns Value, and it's a medium weight for, I don't see a colorway name on it anywhere. Really? Nursery Rhyme. Nursery Rhyme is the color of it. Um, and then this yellow, I thought, went with it really well. It is from the Impeccable in their solids colorway. Um, and it's called Butterscotch. But the thing is, I think it's a heavier weight. Oh, no, it is also listed as a four. <coughs> but they're not both the same weight. <laughs> Even though the ball bands say they are, they are not the same weight to me. I don't know. Maybe they are. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like they are. Knit on the same size needle. Um, the tension is not the same on these yarns. It just, this one's much looser. This one's more dense. Anyway, so I got four squares into this before I realized, like, this is not going to go well. <laughs> it is not going to block out. I, I know it's supposed to be done in garter stitch, but I was knitting back and forth, so I'll ended up in knits in stockinette. Um, and I just, I decided this was not going to work at all. So I put it down. I was going to rip it out and try it in garter stitch, which I might still do with another project. But for now, I'm kind of like, meh, that's not working for me. So I was um, watching The Knit Show with Vicki Howell which is her new, if you remember way back in the day, she hosted Nitty Gritty on, I think, HGTV and then the DIY Network, and she hosted another kind of knitting show on PBS for a while. Um, and she's back with a new show called The Knit Show with Vicki Howell, but it's on YouTube, and she has a website. Um, anyway, so that it's streamable. It's also backed by the knitting community and it's not being produced by like a television network. So um, hopefully the knitting community will keep it around. 
Anyway, one of the gals on the show was working on, um, she's demonstrating the Aster Flower Scarf, which was this knit pattern. Obviously, I'm not doing a scarf. I made it extra long in order to do a baby blanket. And this pattern is available on the Knit Show website. If you go to thenitshow.com, and I'll put it up here so you can see that. Um, the Knit Show, and look for the Aster Flower Scarf pattern, and it will give you this stitch. You can also watch episode two, and you'll see it being demonstrated live. Um, so you can actually see how it works. But I really quite liked this. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that I'm doing it gender neutral enough. I'm kind of worried that maybe it's a little bit girly. Um, I don't know. Boys can do pink, right? It shouldn't matter. Pink or blue. But those fun little circles of color are achieved. Um, you, am I to a point where I can do that? No, I'm not on that row. Um, basically like when you knit into this stitch, you wrap your yarn around it twice. So you get an extra long loop and then you slip all those loops off so that you get the tall loop and you purl through, um, the stitch on the wrong side row and it makes, it kind of twists it like that. See how that's all one set up. Cause you're knitting through all five loops at once and you're putting five stitches into that loop. You can kind of see how that works like that and so then you get that really fun kind of circle woven swoopy flower look on the right side row so it's a really fun pattern to knit and it's knitting up really fast and again it's not color work it's slipping stitches and you're only working with the one color at a time so like on the row that I'm on right now I just knit across all these stitches and I'll knit back and then um, when you bring up your contrasting color, like you slip the stitches that aren't being worked. So all like those yellow stitches in that row are all slip stitches that bring them up in between. So you can see how that's like a tall stitch there. So it's kind of fun and it's making a really cute baby blanket. And if I don't give it to one of the friends who are having a baby, it'll go to the parish on ministry for their baby blanket pile. So, um... Let's see, other knitting news. I can't think of any. Um, I do have a couple of future projects that I'm lining up, but they, um, I wanna get quite a few of these other things off the needles first, especially Mom's Fest. It needs to be a priority to get done for Christmas and I want a couple of shawls worked so um it might be the same projects for a little while but i do have some things that are percolating i have a sweater for myself that i want to get on the needles um i have a hat that i want to get on the needles and i've actually ordered the yarn for it i have been wanting a mustard yellow hat for a really long time and i found the perfect mustard yellow color um, and i want to get one of those big furry pom-poms to put on it so I have a hat idea for myself in the works. Um, a couple of knit alongs coming up in November that I want to join in on. So there's there's things percolating in the future, but for the time being, it's just going to be these couple of projects that I'm working on. Um, I am taking part in something starting on Monday, and I don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> Um, so the, do you remember when I worked on the little, um, shawlette scarf, like the little swatches of shawls with Aroha Knits? Um, Frenchie, who is the designer behind Aroha Knits, has a passion for teaching knitwear design to other knitters, um, and for inspiring a she kind of has a philosophy and I'm not going to explain it well. She explains it better herself, but it's this philosophy of, you know, you're, there's different types of knitters. There's knitters who just want to follow the pattern and that's cool. 
And then there's knitters who look at a pattern and they're like, I'm going to make it just a little, I'm going to tweak this and I'm going to tweak that and make it just a little bit better. And that's kind of where I've been for a long time in my knitting journey is looking at patterns as kind of loose recipes that I can do what I want with. <laughs> and sometimes I follow patterns pretty close. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I think I'd, I'd like it better if I did this or I'm going to tweak this and, and do it my way. Um, but for a long time, I've also wanted to design something. You know, I get these ideas of like, I think I could, I think I could write this pattern. But when it comes to pattern writing, I have no clue how to even begin to put what I'm knitting or what I'm making up in my head or as I knit onto paper. And two of my biggest challenges with putting a design onto paper to put out into the world for other knitters is that I knit left-handed, so I knit backwards. So when I'm doing something, I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. But then when I write it down, if I write it down the way I knit it, it's going to be backwards for everybody. And if I try to flip it, I always worry that I'm not flipping it correctly and that it's just going to be a disaster and not make any sense to anybody. So that's kind of one of my biggest challenges. And also just how to go about um, like finding people to test knit a pattern and tech edit a pattern and publish a pattern. Like with Ravelry, I know it's fairly simple, but those are all just kind of stumbling blocks that I've come up against. Um, so anyway, Frenchie from Aroha Knits is starting kind of like a week long class that kind of helps you get that idea onto paper and to start designing your own pattern. So I'm going to take part in that over, I think it's maybe a two week, a week long or a two week long thing. Oh, my nose is just so itchy today. Um, so yeah, I think that's like a week long, maybe even a two week long course that she's doing. It's starting tomorrow. And I think it's meant to be kind of a teaser or a lead into, she has actual like courses, like paid for courses about knitwear design that you can take. So I'm doing this just to kind of see if I like her method of learning how to design to see if that's something that I might want to like maybe gift myself for Christmas is one of her classes in that. But, or maybe this will just be enough of instruction, you know, just, just that little tiny bit of instruction I need to get me over the hump to actually start writing down some patterns and things that I have been kicking around for myself. Um, and there's lots of times where I will knit something for myself and people ask, well, where'd that pattern come from? I'm like, I just made it up. I don't know. Um, but then I wouldn't, I'm never able to tell them like how to knit that themselves. Like that's always been a big stumbling block. So it's something that, I don't know, maybe I'm going to start working on some designs of my own. Maybe you're going to start seeing some Janessa Keller originals <laughs> here on the podcast. I don't know. Anyway, so what have you been working on while I've been yammering about yarn, Brooklyn? Show what you're, show, I know it's not finished yet, but show that little face that you're drawing because it looks really cute. Uh, can I finish it first? No, just show, show it in progress. It's a work in progress. This is one of your works in progress. Really? Yes. So I I have this pup in mind. He's I like to call him Little Dude Jerry. But <laughs> Little Dude Jerry. <laughs> yes. Okay. And I'm starting to work on his um uniform. He's gonna he look he's gonna be as a sailor pup. A sailor and, pup. And, um, so it's kind of like a sheepdog with his fur down in front of his <laughs> eyes. Is that the he, kind of puppy he is? Yeah, he's a black sheep, like a black sheepdog. Yeah, a black sheepdog. <laughs> um, so I will finish that probably. Or can I finish it like right now? Well, you can show it finished by next week's podcast. Well, that is all from us this week. At just one more thing. Hope you have a wonderful crafty week and we will see you again soon. Next week.